Welcome to episode, I don't know, <laughs> um, episode something of Solo Beatles podcast where we talk all things Solo Beatles. I need to start saying we as, well, let's just say this guy's never leaving. <laughs> um, <laughs> so today, my guest comes from the country of Canada. It's actually our first Canadian guest. <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, Tim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh. So, how how's the weather in Canada? Uh, well, we just got hit with a fro a freezing rain last night, so all the cars were in about covered in about an inch of snow. So pretty much got to slip on your skates and skate everywhere. People <laughs> actually skate to work over there. No, but you probably could have today. Like it was, it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> so now we've got to talk about McCartney going on tour. Yeah. Now, how many times have you seen the man? The man uh, the I've hit double digits. So I, th- I, I think I've, if I count 10 times, I want to wow. say 10 times, maybe 11, because they kind of, his shows, let's be honest, kind of are all the same, and I kind of lose track. It's 10 or 11, probably 10 to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, when was the first tour that you went to go see? The one, okay, the, yeah, I tried to get tickets uh, for his, uh, whatever that was, Driving Rain there in 2002, I think and failed yeah. and so I first saw him during his chaos whatever year that was 2006 I think five five so it would have been 2005 wow and in Toronto in Toronto what was the process of getting tickets then yeah Not, no different just the competition wasn't as bad like as long as you were online at the time you could you could get pretty damn good seats although for that show um I wasn't really fine tuned to when he was coming around, uh, sadly. So I had to get scalping tickets and I got them. Uh, I got in the 200 levels. It took me a few tries before I kind of figured out the system and got front row. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. It takes a few tries. Yeah. I, I got lucky. You did. I heard. You. You aren't seeing Paul. I can't. No, no. With uh, with uh, my life now, I got a little. I got a little. A little mini me. Yeah. So I can't. I can't travel. I not the free spirit I can be. But if he comes around and can, if he comes to Toronto or my city here in Ottawa, then I'll, or Montreal even. It's probably closer to me than uh, Toronto. Then I'd consider going. Would you go even if he was like in? Like as long as long as you could get there in a day and back, would you go? Um, if he was old enough, I'd go. Yeah, for sure. He's already getting into the Beatles. He's already, I'm already fine tuning him. <laughs> Is he not allowed to be in the family if he's not a fan? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't force it, but yeah, I'm subtly forcing it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to you know your beginnings as a as a music fan in general. I mean, what was oh, like... just before anything, okay? Yeah. So, what what year was your like big boom? Uh, like in terms of liking music or collecting music or actively listening to music or because it's been my whole life. Okay. Like my grandparents were very musical. My my grandmother and my grandfather sang in a choir growing up and uh, I just, my mother always played music in the house, you know, rock me to sleep, you know, all the usual stuff. And so it's just been in my blood since. And uh, so my earliest memories are what my mom would sing to me or, I mean, she bought me Rafi and Anne Marie kids albums. Hey, oh. So my <laughs> earliest memories would be those or ABBA. Like I remember Chiquita and songs like that. I remember but it wasn't until about um 
I want to say, geez, I don't even, I, it's, it's all a blend. Probably Michael Jackson was a big one for me growing up. He kind of introduced me into buying music and stuff. Yeah. So I was a big MJ fan growing up as a kid. And then, you know, that got into things like, well, I, I lived in Germany for a long time because so, my father was in the military. So I was there for like six years. So listening to the hot stuff in Europe at the time would have been like, uh, you know, Duran Duran and things like that. So I kind of like that stuff. And uh, actually that kind of segues into McCartney because at that time, my earliest, earliest memories of McCartney was hearing uh, Hope of Deliverance on the radio, oh. which was played to death over there. Overseas, it was played to death. And But I never made the connection. I didn't know as a kid, I was listening to Paul McCartney. I'm just like, oh, this sounds awesome. Which is really then, funny. Yeah, that yeah. It, was it wasn't popular. a hit over here. You no, know, no, it was very popular over there. But I just like, oh, this song's great. Not connecting who really Paul. I mean, I knew Paul McCartney was in the Beatles, but being that young, I just didn't make that. I didn't connect dots. So it wasn't until like when I so when we moved back to Canada from Germany is when uh, the anthology came out. And so ninety five, right? And I watched that, and not that was my introduction to the history of the Beatles. Um, I knew some of the music, you know, help and hello, goodbye and yesterday and, you know, things like that I knew. Um, but my aunt for Christmas that year bought me the anthology one CD, the two CD, because I just got my first ghetto blaster for Christmas and they bought me about five CDs for Christmas to say, you know, to go along with this ghetto blaster. And my aunt bought me anthology one I played it I hated it <laughs> hated it I was expecting you know oh I'm gonna get into all the you know all these awesome songs and no it was just a bunch of demos and poor recordings and it totally turned me off the Beatles and uh, I didn't even listen to them I, I went 96 97 98 and it wasn't until 99 when I was in starting university and uh well, that's not true. If I go back, I'm kind of I'm kind of speeding up the process here. But I do remember uh, Flaming Pie coming out and hearing The World Tonight, which was the hit right at the time. That that got a lot of airplay in Canada here. Thinking, and I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. Anyway, so I'll keep going. But I didn't. I wasn't in collecting. I wasn't into like I wasn't a super fan yet. And in '99 or 2000, um, I met a good buddy of mine. Uh, in university and fast forward a couple more years and driving rain comes out and uh, you know we had discmans right back in yeah you know, <laughs> those little walk portable discmans yeah and uh so you know he had in he was in his computer lab one day and he had driving rain and i had god knows what doesn't even matter and <laughs> we switched cds and he's like oh i got the new paul mccartney cd i'm like oh cool Okay, so this would have been probably, to be honest, my first Paul McCartney CD I've heard from start to finish it was Driving Rain. <laughs> and I liked it. Like, I'm not going to lie, I didn't mind it. But I had nothing to compare it to, really. Yeah. So that's kind of embarrassing, actually, that my first cover to cover album was Driving Rain. But I loved it. And I wouldn't say I loved it, but it was good. It was good. I didn't have any of those, you know, it's certainly not his best by any means having heard his library but anyway so that was my introduction and then from there that's kind of where the scene grew so after hearing driving rain I just went completely backwards back catalog so I was almost more of a McCartney fan than a Beatles fan now you're a big fan obviously yo yeah 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 it, everything just kind of bled into each other and things yep. like that but yeah but uh, I, I'm more of a McCartney fan than I am a Beatles fan but Beatles I mean I just got into them after. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah. But I know you, you got into Lennon before the Beatles, right? Yeah. So I'll give you my story. Yeah. Sorry. That was just like 20 years of just like zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, had George passed 
before Driving Rain came out. Did he pass before Driving Rain? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. And that, when I heard that news, it was like, oh, damn. And again, I was just listening to the Beatles at that point. I wasn't a super fan. So it didn't really hit me. Like, I just yeah. felt like, oh, man, this is like, I knew it was a loss. It was, but you knew it was big. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I just wasn't, I just wasn't that super fan yet. Yeah. And I mean, and he had announced like two days earlier that he was better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. And I'm sure he did that on purpose. Well, yeah. Because he was like, oh, I'm going to make everybody happy and then I'm going to die in a couple days. Yeah. Well, you know, just <laughs> divert the attention, you know, you don't want, you don't want that kind of energy. Yeah. Yeah. And now going to, um, what was I going to ask? What was the first, like, um, collectible you bought first collectible yeah as a Beatle fan uh aside from like albums yeah uh let me think it would have been i don't know because when i when i when when i started becoming a fan i kind of went all in like my earliest memory like i got um you know some 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 of those figurines like the hamilton figurines Oh yeah. Yeah. So I got those pretty early on. Um, I bought uh, <laughs> in 2006. So this is like four or five years after becoming a pretty big fan. I bought uh, uh, McCartney came out with um, these limited edition 200 copies of his, these lithographs that he hand numbered and signed. Yeah. So I splurged on that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have actually the it's the ancient connections one. It's the one with like, he's got like this drum symbol on the bottom. I don't know. Some people might know it. If there's like a drum symbol on the bottom with like three heads, one's a Celtic head, one's this. Um, uh, let me see. It's like this uh, Celtic head, like these two different Celtic heads, and like a human head, and it's kind of linked with this branch. And he called it ancient connections. Some people it, it, there's a book that Paul McCartney came up with, and it shows all of his paintings and things like that you can see it in that or you can go online even yeah it's kind of similar to the you know it was around egypt station there's that big famous one that he did mountain something mountain something with a mountain Uh that was a big famous one he did yeah yeah no but i picked up that one i mean and how did you have you now how many times you said 10 times for paul yeah safe like a safe bet without having to count and go through every show i would say 10 times yeah yeah and now what was the best show out of all oh of oh without even thinking about it liverpool 08 in 08 that liverpool 08 show oh you went and saw oh yeah liverpool? yeah yeah oh yeah yeah they had uh who, who opened it didn't even matter who opened there was one band there was called there's the zootons they opened um i think they're from liverpool and uh, who else opened? Kaiser Chiefs. They played before Paul. But uh, no, Paul, hands down, in Liverpool, was, it was just so energetic. And he opened with Mat- he opened with Matchbox. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like all the stuff you hear in Europe, he played, which is so much better than, than what he plays in America. And have you seen him in the States? Uh, in the States? I want to say no. I have not. Nope. I saw, him, I saw him twice in the UK though. I saw him at the uh, Hyde Park too. Oh, that wow. my, that'd be my second favorite show. And then, uh, and then my third favorite show is probably Quebec. That free show he did in Quebec. I mean, if Paul McCartney puts on a free show, you go. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you've seen the pictures, but there's people. There is photographers when they left the gates open. It was basically a free for all. Everybody <laughs> ran for the front, and there's people like falling over and oh it was insane so i was part i was part of that mad dash so i got front yeah oh wow yeah <laughs> and now i'm gonna look on the internet for a picture of you you will just put in quebec uh uh cité what was it called festival cité festival or something like that it's in 2008 i believe yeah and you'll I just mean. see the pictures of 
everyone getting trampled as yeah. they run to the stage. We won't discuss how old I was in 2008, but I would have been there if I wasn't a toddler. Um, <laughs> and now, what would be your favorite Paul McCartney album? Um, at the moment, like right now? Yes. <sighs> I mean, I'm not a controversial person. It's, it's just too damn good. I'd, prob- I'd probably say either Ram or uh, Ram or if I did, couldn't, you know, if, I, if Ram didn't exist, probably Chaos. We've got two yeah, probably chaos. correct answers. So. Oh, right on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was a correct answer. Yeah, there is. I'll show you and show the folks at home kind of what you're guys doing. This is a German CD pressing of chaos. Oh, right on. Right on. Which, it's, what makes it different? Does anything make it different? It's on Parlophone. Okay. And it's got this little white blurb in the corner. Okay, that doesn't look familiar to me. Yeah. I have the CD. I mean, I have the original pressing too. And then I have the uh, the gold one that came out there a couple years ago. I have oh. the CD somewhere, but I never listen to it. I just go straight to my records. Yeah. The CD. only Paul McCart- the only the only record I'm missing, I have every at least one copy. I have at least one copy of every <laughs> Paul McCartney album on record. I'm just missing uh, Rushes, his Fireman Rushes. Which is crazy. Yeah. But other than that, I have at least one copy of every, like I have all the originals. I have all his classical. Yeah. But I have the original pressings of his, his discography, but I'm missing Rushes. So one day. <laughs> it's a grail. Yes. I mean, you may have to like sell yeah, I might have to sell sell my liver or something. We have two of those, right? No, two kidneys. <laughs> two kidneys, I know. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> well, I mean, your liver does regenerate, so. Yes, don't give me ideas, Hudson. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's your favorite Paul McCartney live album? Live? Yes. Uh, the Amoeba Gig. The Amoeba Gig. Yeah, I really enjoy that. Why isn't it Wings Over America? Uh, cause I'm just it's just nah. It's just not 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 my jam. It's great I mean, though. It's great though. I have. Never... I think it's just because I think it's just because it's more fresh. The Amoeba Gig is a little more fresh. I've heard it less. And... I agree with that. But that's I mean, all. That's all. Jimmy McCullough. So vocals it's just are just so awesome yeah yeah the wings over america the the, uh, the archive set is is actually it's pretty one of the best they've they've done it's yeah. got it's it's got to be like it's three four inches thick it's massive Gee. it's yeah. got three three or four books it's got like a whole chron, chron, uh, the whole chronology of like every stop and oh yeah it's really well done it's one of the better archive collections. I mean, what do you think of the archive series as a whole? They're fantastic, especially the later ones. The first ones, like Band on the Run and McCartney 1, McCartney 2. I mean, at that time, they were great. But when you compare it to the evolution of box sets, I can see them redoing them. <laughs> but when they came out, they were they were amazing. <laughs> so when you compare it to the time, they were very well done. But... I wonder why we haven't gotten an announcement about, about a London Town and Back to the Egg box set yet. Well, after London Town and Back to the Egg, I don't think there's any more wings to release, right? So they're probably right. holding off as long as they can. I, I, I'd see them doing a press to play or like, you know, what everyone's talking about there, like Broad Street, press to play, something like that. I would like, like to maybe. just see like a night. Off the ground would be awesome. I'm oh. really hoping for off the ground. It's, I, I love off the ground. But again, that's I might be biased because that's kind of my first intro to Paul was off the ground. So, like the thing with like the albums that they're reissuing, mm-hmm. like half some of these albums are so hard to get. Like even a CD copy of Off the Ground, Off the Ground hasn't been reissued once since 1993. Yeah, yeah. Same with uh, 
memory and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. drive, uh, drive, driving rain. <laughs> um, and uh, what's that other album? I mean, new is even hard to get for a really long time. Which blows my mind. Well, it must be different in the United States because here in Canada, I saw a brand new copy of new a year or two ago, just before COVID. It was just sitting in the bins. Like you can still get a copy of that, uh, you know, the Amoeba EP? Yeah. It's like four or five songs. That's still sitting in the bins here. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. Like oh. that, that, that Record Store Day uh, wing, that Maybe I'm Amazed single. That's in like that generic sleeve, that black generic sleeve. I saw that just not too long ago, actually, sitting in the bins, a lot of record stores here. Jeez, I think you have a yeah. cool Like he's a, I don't know, it's weird. My city's strange. Like there's allegedly Paul McCartney fans in my city, obviously, but finding certain things here is pretty easy. But certain things are hard. Things that you would normally find pretty easy, you do, I don't see very much. So. Like what don't you see? For example, uh, on on on, um, uh, like something like like band on the run, like it's 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 around, <laughs> it's around, it's popular, but maybe just because once people once they put it out, people scoop them up, it's just something I don't see very much. But that's yeah. really interesting because, like, that's the only Paul McCartney record that you will see at like a flea market is Band on the Run. Yeah, they're in terrible shape though. Finding some of these albums, finding good albums are hard to find in, in good shape because they're so worn out and played. And like I was just putting my entire uh, record collection into Discogs over the past few weeks and uh, just going through my McCartney stuff and my Beatles, like some of the stuff I bought was in pretty rough shape, <laughs> so. Thank God I have a record cleaner. So I just been, that's my next step is to clean all my records. What kind of record cleaner do you have? It's a VPI. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like you just, I just make my own solution. You know, you just distill water, a bit of alcohol and some Dawn to thicken it up. And I got a little horse hair brush and then it comes with a little vacuum so that it sucks all the dirt and, and the uh, solution away right away. And so I can play it immediately great i don't know what it is with the beetle reissues now but they are so dusty they in general i'm finding a lot of new pressings dusty especially if they come in those paper sleeves oh yeah like yeah even the uh intro demos which came in like those way um the line sleeves like i thought that was really dusty for some reason Mm -hmm. and it was just crazy yeah how dusty it was Now, going to our friend George, what okay. would be your favorite George album? George album is probably either Brainwashed or Cloud Nine. <sighs> Brainwashed. Oh, back to I love album. Brainwashed, yeah. I mean, it's so sad to listen to. Mm-hmm. But Well, that's the thing. I don't know if it's a mist- like I don't know if it's a if it's a if it's because it came out at that time like I you know everyone feeling so bad and they come out with a George album and so it's kind of sentiment I don't know but the more I hear it the more I'm like you know what this is really good like a lot of people don't like stuff from that era because let's just say 2001 was not a very good year <laughs> um no <laughs> I mean with 9-11 I mean George died I mean that was devastating yeah. Um, but I mean, you had some great albums. I mean, oh yeah, Bob Dylan, Love and Theft came out on nine eleven. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is like a top five Dylan album. Like, let's be real. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I like but, Dylan. I'm not a super fan, but Inf- uh, Infidels is my favorite Dylan album. If you I have a least favorite, a least favorite. Well, I don't know his whole discography. Okay, fair enough. Like, how how many albums do you think you're familiar with? Mm, well, the you know, Blonde on Blonde, Highway Fifty One. I think Temp- Tempest. I've heard his new one. I've heard that one's great. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's very it's very narrative. 
which I kind of like because I'm a big Roger Waters fan and a lot of his solo stuff is very narrative. <laughs> so I kind of dig that style. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about, um, what do you think is George's weakest album? Um, well, I don't like like extra texture, dark horse, like that's, those aren't my favorite. But, you know, material world is awesome, you know, um, like his early ones, it's just the middle ones I'm not a big fan of. How do you feel about the self-title? Don't mind it. It's, it has its moments. Every, every, every album has its moments. What about uh, 33 and a third? Yeah, no, I don't like that one so much. Really? Uh, yeah. You don't like Beautiful Girl? Again, like maybe a track or two, but as an album, I don't find myself listening to it. There's just too much else to listen to. I just, it's a record I just wouldn't put on. Okay, well, I can tell you that's our next topic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. And now a word from our sponsor that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, if you are listening, and I doubt you are, but you're welcome to uh, sponsor your our, the show. Um, just reach out. <laughs> now, when you're out looking, like, are you usually just looking for stuff to play or, like, vinyl-wise? When I'm out looking at a record store? Yeah. Oh, I just go to see what catches the eye. So I'm not out looking for this pressing because I'll just come out disappointed. <laughs> so I go flip through, see what they have. Unless you're like getting something new. Yeah, which is not that often really. Like I would say 80% of my collection, maybe 75 is, is used. Yeah. yeah. Are you getting any record store day releases? Um, yeah, I'm going to get the Ron Sexsmith. I'm going to get the Elton John. Um, uh, there was one more that caught my eye, but I'm, it's escaping me. Elton John, Ron Sexman. I have to see the list again. Yeah. There's one more I know caught my eye. Are you getting the McCartney, maybe I'm amazed thing from the UK, if you can order it? If you can order it, yeah, I mean, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. I'm, think we'll I'm thinking about it. Yeah, we'll see. I'll try. But let's talk about good old Ron for a little bit. Oh, sure. Uh, we know how much you love Ron. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Yes, and you made me a fan. So mm -hmm. uh, um, going to like the fact that he is not as famous as he should be is just mm -hmm. so bad. Like yeah. the guitar work in some of his stuff. And oh, he's a great vocal. guitar player. Yeah. And the vocal delivery. Mm -hmm. And his voice is still in really good shape for an almost 60-year-old man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have the range, but he's just so melodic. He's just so melodic. Yeah. If he was just, he's just one of those, like, uh, he's just one of those artists that's just born out of time. It's, had, he, had he been, you know famous and or had he been his records been out in the 70s or he would have been he would have been a household name for sure people just have to give him the you'll have to give him that chance if you listen to his music it's just ridiculously good i agree now what, what would be your favorite ron album at the moment at this time my, my well uh probably time being i love time is, being what year 2008 Okay. Ish, ish, yeah. I need to familiarize myself with that one, but yeah, it's just it's just an incredible album. That one, Exit Strategy uh, for the Soul is really really good. If you like brass, yeah, um, yeah, that's a kind of a go to. I love my brass sections. Um, retriever, Retriever, Retriever was his Swan. This Swan album that's probably his best commercially, or Long Clear Late Bloomer actually it probably is. His best commercially, the I one mean, that Bob Rock produced. I mean, he played at Albert Hall, the Royal Albert Hall. Did you go to that show? No, no, I wish. Tried. We tried to get tickets actually. Yeah. But we couldn't make it, couldn't swing it. Yeah. No, like the thing with like I wonder if like 
I've heard people describe Ron as your mm-hmm. favorite singer songwriter, favorite singer songwriter. Um, yeah, he's. Uh... I mean, aside from Paul McCartney, there's no other, I, I don't see any other person who has the gift of melody that he does. I, I mean. Like if you were to erase Paul McCartney, I think like, like Ron said, if you listen, listen to his music, it's, it's, but I mean, he's got what, 16 albums. So it's tough to kind of, <laughs> I mean, it's, hard, it's, hard to, it's hard to say, it's hard to tell you what, what songs are, are great. Yeah, having to like dive in, but just dive in. And the f- it's a funny thing because like he's a simpleton. Like he is. Like, the guy can't even use a cell phone. <laughs> or or get on a Zoom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, his wife has to set it up for him. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Oh my gosh. Well, his huh. wife drives him. His wife drives him around too. Like I told you that story where he doesn't drive. No, so I told you that story eh, where I ran into him at the pizza shop after the show. He's like, "Oh, I would have driven you," but like his, but his wife drives him around, so could have gotten a ride with Ron Sexsmith in his car. But I politely, like, de- I politely declined. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's just so cool. Now, like the thing with being with McCartney is like mm-hmm. with Ron, like. He interacts with his fans because he's well, so small. He he puts himself out there like after the shows. I don't know how because I'm going to see him in a few weeks. So with COVID and stuff, I don't know how it's going to work. But pre-COVID, he would come out after the show and he'd be open. He's he loves greeting his fans and chatting. We had actually we had some extensive conversations about. He's a big Elton John fan, and uh, wow. we had some extensive conversations about just music in general and. He's just the sweetest guy. Yeah. Unlike, actually, it's funny. Unlike Paul, when I met Paul, uh, as you can see from this, <laughs> he looks a little disgruntled. <laughs> That's the photo I took when he signed my record. Wow, well, yeah. <laughs> he now, looked a little disgruntled, but. Do you want to tell us the, good. Sto- the story of ment- meeting Paul? Well, there's not really a story. It's just being. I caught him, I caught him at the airport, you know, you catch him at the airport, so you go to the gate, and as he's coming out, he stops, well, he used to, this is back in uh, 2005, 2006, he, uh, he, you know, he, I mean, he does sign, I've, I've heard him, I've heard stories of him signing, but he only signs at the airport, so if you want Paul McCartney autograph, go to the airport, but it's a private terminals, so anyway, so you go out there, you wait, and you know, there's there's a small group of people always and he just not you know he'll sometimes he'll come sometimes he'll do them sometimes he won't and if this crowd's if the crowd's small enough he'll he'll knock one off for you or whatever but yeah he's not so good about it anymore but so I'm lucky to have gotten him before uh, any of that and there's my Ringo when I met Ringo wow he looks just signing he does not the same yeah eh? You could you think it's yesterday? Eh? <laughs> yeah, I mean he's yeah. like, mm. yeah, mm. another autograph. Yeah, again, that's before he start he stopped signing. Oh my gosh! I kind of got, I got them two years apart. I got Paul, and then I got Ringo to add to. I got my let it. Well, I was just getting into records at that time, so I mean yeah. that that wouldn't have been my first record of choice, but I I had let it be at the time, so I brought yeah. let it be with me. So I have let it be signed by Paul and Ringo. After the 24th, yeah. I'm warning you, peace no and more. love. Peace and love. Peace no and more love. autographs. Yeah, peace and well. love. All fan mail will be sent we'll to be the trash. Yeah. Don't make me do a British accent. It'll sound Australian. I mean, I can imagine, like, Ringo just taking, like, a match with all fan mail. Yeah. And just burning it. And just running it through his shredder. <laughs> yeah. All right. Going peace. Yeah. <laughs> Just like those bonfires that you see from the remember when they burned all their Beatles records from John's uh Yeah John's Jesus. comment about Jesus. Yeah, and you see all those I just like all the money that people are burning. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, going back to Ron. That's the things you think about as a fan. Yeah. <laughs> going see? back to Ron, if people yeah. want to know, my yeah. favorite Ron Sexmas album is 
Yours? Ron Claire, late bloomer. Yours is? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you changed it because the last time you said it was his debut. Well, that, yeah, I never, I can't ever keep my opinions the same. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like that with Paul. Like my, my favorite always changes with him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what was your first uh, concert? Ever? Yes. Elton John. What year? 1997. What venue? 1997. Uh, at the, here in Ottawa. Oh, wow. Yeah. At the, uh, the, the one and only arena that's here. That's been changed. That's changed its name about three times. <laughs> What's the name of it now? It's the, I don't even, couldn't even tell you. Uh, no, was it Scotiabank? It's either Scotiabank or Canadian Tire now. Center. Canadian Tire. Yeah, it was Corel Center back when WordPerfect was making money. Then they sold it and it went to something else, I think. And then it went to Scotiabank Place. And then it, which is a bank. I don't know if they have those in America. I've and heard then, of them, but they don't. And then it went to Canadian Tire Center, which is basically like a hardware store here in Canada. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so but, that's where I saw it. That's where I, that was my first show, Elton John. Which and, the the, and, and, and Princess Diana had just recently died, I think. And he was... He was, uh, um, he was, I think he sang, uh, my memory might be escaping me, but uh, there's a song called Salt and Water. I don't oh, yeah. know, what, I forget who the artist is. Or Sand and Water, Sand and yeah. Water. And a million years gone by, that one. I, I, don't, I don't remember the, the artist, but I think he sang that in memory of her. And then did he do the um, rewritten no. version of Candle? In the no, no, he, he, would, he won't do that. He doesn't do that anymore. He won't do it. But he sang another song in as an honor. No, he no. did that one. I don't think he, he did that one time, that candle in the wind thing, and that was it. It was just no. for that one occasion. I'll be honest. Yeah. I like his version about Diana better than Marilyn Monroe. Fair enough. I mean. <laughs> it's okay. With the, with the royal stuff, like. Mm hmm if Princess Diana had lived, my theory is, is that she would have been in support with the whole Meghan and Harry thing. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, they treated her just like that, if you think about it. Yeah. But I don't want to get into royal family. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really follow that stuff too much. It, it's too corrupt for me. It's apparently. <laughs> it's been getting a lot of news lately, more than it usually does. Yeah. Yeah, I, the, I I do not. Um, I I am scared of the queen thing, if that <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> now, who's your favorite Beatle other than Paul, songwriter wise? Mm, John Lennon. I, I I can guess who your least favorite Beatle is, <laughs> and it's not Pete Best. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pete. Yeah, it's Ringo. Yeah, he's just, he's just, it's just, it's the same formula over and over. I'm not going to lie, Hudson. I, like I think I told you before, I only got about four Ringo records. I've got Why Not, Ringo, um, Time Takes Time, which is excellent because it's just so well done. Plus, the jellyfish is on there, and that's another story. Jellyfish is just ridiculously underrated. And uh, I think I have, oh, Liverpool 08, I think I have. I have that one. That Liverpool or whatever it's called there. Yeah. Did I didn't get the album name right? Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. I have that one. I didn't bother, like, I don't mind his new EP, the first one. That one I didn't mind, but I, I didn't buy it. But it's, there's nothing, it's okay. Yeah. Now, before we wrap things up, like, oh, sure. um, like, I forgot my question. So, <laughs> forgot what? I forgot my question. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, is there anything you would like to plug? Oh, plugging? No, I'm, I'm, I've always been. I don't know. I'm just very. I'm always in the peanut galleries, or I'm always. You know, all the channels that are out there, I watch, um, but uh, I've never really, I never come to the forefront. And 
you know, I'll comment here and there on things, but I don't know. I just, I keep the peace and I'm just one of those closet. I'm just one of those closet fans, you know, like those big, big fans, you know, I'm sure there's many of there out lately, but I figure I'd try and try this podcasting thing and yeah, see. Yeah. Cause it looks like fun. It's the only really way I can talk about the Beatles these days with COVID and with the way things are going right now, I'm just so busy that yeah, it's just a little, little escapism. Yeah. To tap my feet back into the beat, you know, keep, although I've heard you through your, your, you could, you could dance around me when it comes to trivia. I'm just, a, I'm just a big fan of the music. <laughs> so. Yeah, fair. Maybe we can like have an ultimate round of Beatles trivia someday. Yeah, we'll see. I'll put my knowledge to the test and see where that goes. I'm not like, I'm, I know my fair share of knowledge, but there's a, I'm not one of those that knows every little quirk and detail and <laughs> not like some people out there. And that's okay. I have, I have Beatles Trivial Pursuit. I win at that. Because <laughs> it's like, what year did help come out? What year yeah. did Abbey Road come no, out? No, no, there's some really weird questions like, who is the hotel owner of this hotel that they stayed at? Like, there's some ridiculous questions in there. I don't know for people who own that Trivial Pursuit, but it's pretty crazy wow yeah yeah but yeah i just uh, so i got nothing to plug i'm just uh this, basically this show <laughs> yeah so you can email us at podcast at com if that makes sense <laughs> um <laughs> and if you want to talk to me directly go to hudson at com. i answer mail but if you ask me for an autograph I'm warning you with peace and love. You're not getting no it. more autographs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was fun. I looked yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was just kind of going through going through geez, 20, 25 years and <laughs> in a quick little hour. So I yeah. probably left a lot out. I'm I'm sure I have. I there's a lot of a lot of things that I have that I, I mean I could go on for if you ask me specific questions, I could go on for hours and hours and hours. I have so much in this house. It's kind of embarrassing people make fun of me but uh i guess we'll save that for another day yeah so everybody peace and love